Alléluia. Amen. Please let's be seated. Our seminar topic is prosperity with a purpose. Prosperity with a purpose. Amen. So important that we understand that everything that we do, there should be a purpose for what we are doing it. Most of the times, if we don't understand the purpose of what we are doing, it will frustrate us. And then we are not going to get the result because there is no purpose behind it. So the most important thing in our life is the purpose for the purpose means the why when you understand the purpose for what you're doing it will give you passion it's not what is important is why so why gives meaning to what that's why everything i do in this organization in this ministry is the why that's why marriage the most important thing is why school why money why because if you don't know the why you will not be able to go through it when the temptations comes and the trial come but once you know the why it will help you so that's why we are not like the people of the world who prosper, but they are frustrated. Because when you get everything at the end, you begin to ask, why did I work so hard? Why did I not spend time with my family? And I earn so much money, but look at me now. My family is disintegrated. I don't have nothing. And then you hear people commit suicide. Because they got the things, but they didn't understand the why. So, it, uh, the scripture talks of the prosperity of the fool will destroy him. So, you can be prosperous, but the prosperity is a fool because he gets all the prosperity, yet he doesn't understand the why. So, that's why this seminar is all about the, the purpose of prosperity now we need to understand that why do we teach prosperity why do we teach prosperity why do we teach wealth in the kingdom it's so important for us to understand that your life in eternity is in a balance with your prosperity we see also from the scripture that many people lost their life when they got everything and it included their family because they got the wealth but their life was destroyed for instance we heard a case in the bible that talks of a man called Gehazi, who was such a covetous man that when his his master the prophet healed Naaman and Naaman wanted to give him gold, silver. He said, no, this healing is not done by me, but by God, take your silver. But when Gehazi saw it, he ran after the man. And then the man said, what is it? Is there something wrong? He said, no, my master said you should give him those things that he didn't get. So he said, yes. So he gave him the things, some of the things. Mm -hmm. And when he came back, he hid the things and Elisha said to him, where are you from? He said, no, I was just turning around. He said, were well, my eyes not with you, when I saw Naaman gave you this possession, the silver and the gold, he said, the leprosy of Naaman will cleave to you and your generation. So you see how the man, not only him, but his generation was destroyed because of his covetousness. Also, we see in the case of a man called Achan in the book of Joshua chapter 7 when Israel had defeated Jericho and God said to them, 
as a result of all the possession you have gotten, nobody to, sh to take anything. It should be for me as a first fruit. What did Achan do? Achan went and took part of it. All the some of the, the, the gold, the gold goblets and some of the, the Babylonian carpet and hid them. But when Israel went to war to a small village called Ai, A I, the small village defeated them. And Joshua said, What happened that we could not defeat this small village? Then God revealed to him that there was a man in your camp that when I told you people not to take anything, he took it and read it. And then Joshua called that. He came forward and he confessed. And what they happened? They stoned him and his generation. His entire family was destroyed. So that's why it's so important for us to know that in the sense of wealth, not only you are affected, but your generation. That's why he says, choose this day whom you will serve. Because it's not only you affected, but your children's children are affected with the generation that you make. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to look into this subject of wealth. Because most of the time, all of us spend our time, wake up early in the morning, go to work for eight hours, come back home, and so on. But we don't understand what is money. And when you don't understand what is money, you'll be working for illusion. Because that's why understanding is the key. Because once you understand that money is an illusion, it's just an, a concept, it's an idea, then it will not frustrate you to just be working for something which you don't know. So that's why we're talking about understanding. First, we need to understand that the scripture says, in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19, it says, money answers everything. You say, what answers everything? Money. 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 That means, if this, they say something answers everything, you want to know what it is. Because it gives an answer. Actually, it says, money explains everything. That means, the underlining fact for everything, you see money. When you look at how couple they live, what is their problem they are really going to? Inside of it, there is a money factor. There is a what? Money factor. Yeah. What motiv there is only two motivations in life. Money and God. You cannot love what? God and mama. So these are the two motivations that motivate every human being. So when somebody says, I'm doing something, mm. ask them, is it for money or for God? For God, these are the two things. Thing. Everybody is so you want to know what it is because that's what motivates you. Somebody say, I don't want money, but you wake up early in the morning, 5 30, even when they say service today, you prefer to go there and you walk and walk and walk and walk, but yet you don't know what it is. So that's why it's so important for us to understand what money in the kingdom. And another thing is that. The, the, the scripture says, the love of money is the root of all evil. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. The love. The what? Love. Love. The love. Not that money is the root, but the love of it. So every evil is rooted in the love of money. Mm. All the evil you see today behind it mm. is what? Money. money. And that's why we should be able to understand what money is. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is that the rich rule over the poor. Mm -hmm. The what? The rich. And God said that you should be the head and not the... Yeah. You should be above and not be... Mm -hmm. Now, but if the rich are ruling over you, mm -hmm. how can you be the head and not the tail? I mean, you can say we are the head and not the tail, but uh, who is in control of you? That's why we need to have dominion, and dominion, we need to know dominion in this particular area. Because you don't want to be ruled, you want to rule, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a natural thing for everybody to rule. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need to understand this subject.
Are you getting me? Amen. Now, another thing we need to understand in the kingdom is that there are seven fears of prosperity. You know, because you can and I cannot just focus on one aspect. There are seven fears of prosperity. And when we talk of prosperity in the kingdom perspective, we are talking of all round, not just one. And I'm going to go briefly. Number one, prosperity is spiritual prosperity. The scripture talk of a rich fool, you know, which he said, okay, look at what my lands has produced, my barns have produced, I will get all these things and I will say to myself, relax, you have so much in stock for you. Mm -hmm. You don't need to worry again. And that's what most of you and I, we are trying to reach that point. I will not need to work again. I will just retire. I say I have enough money saved. Uh, what am I working again? I have already acquired everything. And God said, you fool. Today, your soul will be taken from you. He said, then, this is how it will happen to people who are rich in this world, but not rich towards God. So you can be rich in, in the ter in sense of material. That's why they call it the rich fool. Because he was rich in the world, but yet he was poor, having no relationship with his creator. Mm -hmm. Number two is mental prosperity. Say with me, mental. Mm -hmm. Mental. You know, this is one of the most important forms of prosperity. Because who you are today is as a result of your mind. Your mental prosperity is more than your material prosperity. Because... A man who has no money but has a prosperous mind is more prosperous than a man who has money and has a poverty mindset. So money is a mindset, it's a feeling. It's how prosperous are you in your mind. It's your mind that prospers you. But when your mind is blocked, it cannot receive anything. You can have money and still live like a midget. Have you heard of people who died and they realized that these people had millions of dollars stored up somewhere and they were living just like rats and, and they were not eating anything, but they had what? Money. And their family finally realized that, is this how prosperous this man was? But yet, he was living like a wretched person. So your mindset to have a sound mind mm intelligent is so important because nowadays you with your mind you can leave this country of Norway and go to any country you will still make money because you have intellectual property your money is in your knowledge are you getting me mm -hmm. they can take all the money you have but you cannot take yeah. the mind mm -hmm. because if I go anywhere I will still create the wealth mm -hmm. so people who don't have intellectual property their mind is not sad they hold on to their physical cash they cannot let go because they think if i lose the money i'll not get it but people with a prosperous mindset know that money is just a mindset it's an illusion i can go anywhere in the world with my mindset i can just produce something because what is money money is simply a medium of exchange mm. that's what money is mm. money is a what medium mm. of exchange. For instance, I said I was going to organize this seminar. There are people who already gave money to this seminar, put it in their account, before the seminar took place. Mm -hmm. But if I went to those people and asked them money, they say, Pastor, I don't have money to give you. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No, I will not give But when I organized a seminar and I knew that I was going to exchange knowledge for money, they gave the money. So, you are looking in Trondheim City today. You are thinking there is no money. No. Money is a reward for the problem we solve for other people. Look into the society and think, what problem was I created to solve? And then you solve the problem with your mind and people will give you money. So, money is a byproduct of your service you render or a produce you produce for the people. That's why it comes from your mind. It, it's come from your so a man with a prosperous mind can never be broke because he can think of ways and means to bring up services and product that will serve humanity. 
People in the other world do it in the wrong way. For instance, a prostitute knows that I want money, isn't it? And she prostitutes her body and they give her what? Money or you see? But they do it in the wrong way. They know that oh, I need money. But you and I who are positive in our mind, we should sit down and think like, what can I produce? What service can I render? Then money is that by pro So money is a mindset. That's simply it. That's why you hear in this time of the COVID, the billionaire and the millionaire have made much money in this crisis time because they produce services and product in this crisis that and make more money. Meanwhile, the normal person who is just working for money gets his money and save in the bank and the bank, the government keep producing more of this paper money mm -hmm. and your money is depreciating in value called inflation mm -hmm. because of the deflation they are producing more money. Mm -hmm. So you're becoming more poorer when you have money safe in the bank because your money is losing value. Mm -hmm. But when you get a mindset, your value can only increase as you study and read more books. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. So money is simply a mindset. Number, number three is emotional prosperity. People can be mentally rich but emotionally poor. Emotional prosperity is freedom from negative emotion. Because money is an emotional subject. If you want to talk to somebody when you want to have crisis, when it comes to money, you see how emotion people get to. They get something comes up like, hey, what is this? Is their emotion playing now? Mm -hmm. They love you, you love them, but if you see it, the emotion is placed on you. Cannot touch my money. This is my God because their emotion <laughs> rules over their reasoning. Mm -hmm. So money is an emotion. So for you and I to be really prosperous, we must eradicate negative emotion about money. Because, for instance, if I take, let me say, I have some krona here. You see, I can take that krona, I twist it, it's still krona. I can stamp it, it doesn't lose value. Are you getting me? Yeah. But it becomes emotional when I tear it. Somebody say, ha! Mm -hmm. Something, I you tear the money now, give me. So money is, a, that's why you have to be emotional. That's why they say people who commit suicide, they didn't handle their emotion when it comes to money because when you put, like you invest in the stock market, you want to hear the thing that you expect to grow, it just go down one. What happened? Your emotion is affected and then you commit suicide because you didn't balance your emotion with money. So money, you have to eradicate worry, fear, an anxiety when it comes to money because mm -hmm. money is a spirit but he has a soul and lives in a body the spirit is called mammon the soul is the value money controls in the market and the body is the currency so if you go to any country you have currency but there's a spirit behind it mm -hmm. so you need to capture the soul of money which is the value of the money and the the spirit is the mammon, and that spirit is what kills many people today. Kill people, family people, relatives die because of the spirit of money. That's why you need to be delivered from the spirit of mammon. So money is not bad, but it's the spirit that is attached to money. That is why for Jesus Christ to be used by the Father God, he had to be tempted with the spirit of money. When the devil took him to the high mountain and said, all these kingdoms I will give you, the last temptation, bow down and worship me. And what did Jesus say? No, worship only God. So you, have, you either worship mammon, money, or you worship God. That's it. You see? So that's why you need to be emotionally sound. Not to allow money to control your emotions. Mm -hmm. When you lose it. You see? That's why people, most of us, people who are really broke, are people who are afraid to invest. The man said, I was afraid to invest the money and went and hid it. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. What was he afraid of? <laughs> he dug the ground and I was afraid. But the people we risk. They always invest. But say, I was afraid I'm going to lose the money. So I used to bury it. His emotion was ruling him. So the, the fourth thing we need to understand that 
Prosperity is also physical, healthy body. Sometimes we work more for money than we work on ourselves and our physical health. Mm. You see, because you work more for money at the end of your age, you and I, you so people, person is so physically drained that he cannot even enjoy the money. Why? Mm. He didn't take care of himself. Mm. Like he didn't eat the right kind of food didn't sleep well, didn't drink water, dehydrated, never exercised, but just keep working for money all the time. Mm. But then, never taking care of himself. You see, you are the most valuable product on earth. That is why every human being is valuable. Even if they were born today, you kill them, people cry. Because there's a value God put in every human being. Mm. That's why you need to value your self. That means taking care of yourself, having good sleep, good rest, dress well, eat right at your own pace. Because that is who you are. Mm -hmm. so, so physical is so important. Very, very important for us to be physically sound. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing is relational. I'm going to go quick. Relationship. See, if you can have all the money in the world and don't have companionship, you are still a poor man. Yeah, because if we came to this hotel and, <laughs> and there was nobody, mm. big hotel, nobody to serve us drink, nobody to, and they say, oh, you are the owner of the whole Trondheim city, and you go to the gas station, there's nobody, you go to Rema, there's nobody, but you own all the city. You are poor. Yes. Because it's all about companionship. That's why God said it is not good for man to be yes. alone. Yes. It means that not just married, but you have to be in a network, in a society that like we are, like a family like this. Mm -hmm. That's why fellowship, you come and you eat, because if you had all the money in the world, mm -hmm. you know, and you are just driving the car, you need somebody to be beside you to drive, mm -hmm. and you feel happy. Mm -hmm. So you are not actually looking for money for yourself, you're looking for money to share companionship. You're looking for money because when two of you go to the restaurant, you say, this is my wife, this is my husband, we are sharing. You feel joyful. But if you all had the own, my money, my money, you will boss. That's why companionship is very important. You see? Relationship is very important. And so most of the time we work money that we don't have no relationship. You see, most people, they, when they are prosperous now, they begin to send away the wife who helped them. They begin to send the husband. I just won lottery. This man used to control me. Get out of my way now. <laughs> or oh, this woman, get out. Now I got money. I can be independent. Mm -hmm. But don't realize, sooner or later they see that I have got money, but I still need somebody. Need somebody. What did they do? They go and look for a whole room. A small boy come and stay with me for my money. <laughs> you see, because you can't live alone. It's so important for us to understand relationship. Then the fifth thing is that vocational prosperity. You need to have work. Work is not a curse. Work is a blessing. When God created man, he gave man work. Every man should be working. Now, somebody say, there are no jobs. There are no jobs, but they say work. In this city, there is always work. Work is not something you go and do. Work is what you become. Mm. The birds is working. Some people say, there are no jobs. I say, create one because there's work. Mm. Because you were given work and a man is fulfilled in his work. Mm. Is it? That's why a man needs a woman to compliment him in his work. And when a woman comes, it, she helps you because women are generally engineered, wired to help the man for his work. That's it. Be, be, so when a man is in his work, he is totally fulfilled. Because work is not a curse. So you don't go to job, you don't go to work to get money. The purpose for, for work is not money. The purpose of work is to release your potential. So work is not a curse. You see? But the way you have been taught in school is that you need to get a certificate and apply for a job. And that's why it's frustrating. But your work, you were born with your work. 
Are you understanding? So you have your walk. So I'm always walking. Continuously I'm walking. I don't even have time. I keep on walking every day. You know? So when you begin to walk, you begin to expand. You begin to grow. And when you expand, money is a byproduct of the expansion that has taken place in your life. I'm shocked even in this ministry, sometimes I'm, I'm somebody just come in, I don't know, and you call me, Pastor, I just send some money in the account, I'm shocked to receive money. And the Holy Spirit says, yes, but that's how it is. When you give value to people, mm. when you serve people with value and you don't expect nothing, they have to reciprocate. Mm. It has to be because the same energy and effort you are putting out there, it will come back to self. You grow your potential and you make sure you give value to people. Don't be afraid. It will come back. It's a law. It's a law. So it's not a matter of how will people give me. Just walk and give value. You'll be shocked at how people will give you money. That's work is very important. And work is your mission. It's the mission that you were born to do. Every one of us here is on a mission. You are not just here just to pay bail and, and do something, but you are, and your work is your mission. So you need to find what is my mission? What is, what is my work? That's why you hear Jesus say, I walk the work my father sent me. My father is walking and I also am walking. What was Jesus walking? You see, but he was in his work. He said, Father, I brought you glory on earth by completing the work which you gave me. So everybody is working. That's why God hates laziness. Say with me, God hates laziness. God hates yeah, because laziness brings poverty. Laziness is a curse. That's why you have to engage. That means you have a certain time you wake up. You have a certain time you say, I'm studying. You have a certain time you do things. You don't just wake up and somebody go, hey, can we take a ride? Yes. Let's go. Uh, uh, what are you doing today? Can we? Yes, let's go. No, I'm walking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm walking. Are you getting me? Yeah. So you put your schedule because just as you go to your office and just as you work for the boss for a time, me too, during that time, I lock up myself in my work. So you have finished your work, you want to use my time to go <laughs> enjoy yourself. <laughs> no, we are all working. Okay. So the last, the last thing is the second to the last I want to talk is social pros. Say with me, social prosperity. Social social it means the impact and the influence you're gonna live on earth. Mm. What influence are you going to? You see, when you die, what will people know that you did? What influence did you place in this city? For instance, we are in Tronem City, isn't it? Mm. And you should ask yourself, what has Tronem given me? What has, but you should ask yourself that, what have I contributed to Toronto? Today we are in one of the best hotels in this city. How did it come? How did it come that we are in this hotel today, one of the most, if I tell you how much you pay for having this place like this, how much does it come? Because it's a principle. The impact will create ability. And you'll see yourself in the future be talking to people that you didn't believe. The impact. Just don't think, what can I take from this country? What can I take? No. The thing is, what can I give? Mm. One little light is very important. Yes. You see? One light is very important. We are the light. Mm. We are the light, light of the world. Wow. We should be the one to have seminar here. Mm. But it's the modern we don't never have seminar here. So we also are millionaires. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see? So we should think that they are not extraordinary people. They are just human beings like you and I. They have problem family. They have health challenges. They are reading books. So why are they doing things and we look at them and we complain and we blame? Why not take the initiative that they are also human beings? If they can read, I can read. If they can study, I can study. If they can exercise, I can exercise. So what makes you different? That's why Job said, I am not inferior to you because I know what you know. Mm. 
you know, Job chapter 13, verse 2. Read that, that verse of scripture. Um, for me, please, Marius, read it for us. Job chapter 13, verse 2. You see, what you know, I also know. Yes. I am not aware to you. Yes. So, what you know, I also know. Mm -hmm. See, when you know what other people know, mm -hmm. Bill Gates is not more than you just know certain mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. That's it. Warren Buffett, that, they say Warren Buffett, one of the richest billionaires in the world, still lives in the same house he has been living for 35 years. So it's not about money. He eats hamburger for, for $17 every morning. This man is a millionaire, you can't imagine. He still drives the same car. It's not money they are looking for. They are looking for impact, influence. You see? That's it. What legacy are you going to leave? For you, your generation. So, so it is a social impact. Mm. It is the influence. It is the influence you want to live. And the last one is financial security. So if you look at this thing, there are seven phases of prosperity we are just looking. So if you just focus one on money, mm. the rest is bad. Mm. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, if you just think just on one aspect, the rest is bad. We're going to take a break soon. Are you blessed? Yes. Now, we need to understand that there are two levels of prosperity, two types of prosperity. There is the prosperity of earthly prosperity, which is temporal, and there's heavenly prosperity, which is eternal. Isn't it? Amen. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, there is earthly temporal wealth, and there is eternal heavenly riches. So we should not just limit ourselves to the earthly temporal riches, but we should go beyond the earthly wealth into eternal riches. You understand? Yes, so we, if you look at the earthly wealth, the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 19, please Marius read for us, Matthew chapter 6 verse 19, we look at two types of wealth now. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth mm -hmm. where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Mm -hmm. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. So we see there laying up treasure for yourself yeah. either on earth or in heaven. Mm -hmm. And most of us what are you laying up? What are you laying up? Because there is no security on this earth. Nothing on earth is enduring. It's temporary. The stock market, precious metal, Bitcoin, real estate, nothing, nothing. Don't even depend on those things because they are temporary. So when you hear that stock market crash, the people with emotion say, hey, I cannot put my money. Where, they, where is the security? Nowhere. So on this edge, there is no permanent security. Just know that. So that you are not moved to hear that there is a market crash. Instead, I don't want to go there, but instead, if you are investing, when there is a market crash, that's when you should buy more because you are buying on sale. How many people love sale? We are talking <laughs> Friday is coming. They are going to be saved. Because they are selling things cheap. When you hear a market crash, they are simply telling you that the shares are selling at low price. So buy them now when there's a crash because it's going to rise up. So you prefer to buy consumer good, shoe, clothes. That will not increase in value for sale. But you will not invest in a share. That has value that will increase in the future. So when you hear of there's going to be sale, there are people not keeping money, go for sale. But when they go to stop, they will not invest because they say my money will lose, my money will crash. Because they are consumer mentality. Most of us are consumer mentality. And a consumer mentality will always lead to poverty. Because you are not thinking futuristic, all that you have. It's just asset which is consumer at the household value. Mm -hmm. 
when you hear of rich people or wealthy people, they are people who don't even have consumer goods, but they have asset, not liability. For instance, they have shares, they have bond, they have they have um, um, Bitcoin, they have uh, businesses, they have real estate. So their money is not even in cash. Mm. It's in their asset. Mm. But everybody, because I know this because, you know, I'll give you my own personal testimony. See, you, you, if you work this principle, it will work for you, for all of us. Mm -hmm. I, I, so let me stay here. You need to understand that there are two types of prosperity, earthly wealth and heavenly wealth. Again, in Luke chapter 16, verse 13, please, Maros, read for us. Luke chapter 16, verse 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, mm -hmm. or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. That's it. No two, no servant can serve two masters. So, <laughs> which master are you serving? You cannot serve God and money. That's why I come to the point of choice. Whatever you and I today is a result of our choices. Mm -hmm. Say my choices. My my choices. choices. It's nothing, nobody is witchcrafting you. <laughs> you know, because religious people don't tell you, hey, my, somebody take my money. Nobody do your money. <laughs> you spend it based on your choice. <laughs> so everything on this earth is a matter of choice. God says, I put before you life and blessing and cursing you choose. So where you are today and where I am today is a result of the choices. Now when money comes into your hand, you can either choose to invest that money or to spend the money. It's a choice you make. That's it. Because there is a principle, you say go to the ant and look at the ant. The ant is what? The ant is taking little by Little by, you want to see build a house. There is no instant wealth. It's little by, keep 200 today, 200 next time, 200 next time. But you see some of us, when we go to that same, hey, it's a 50%. You buy it, but it has no value. That 50, 100 corner, you would have invested that money. That money, you, but you bought something on sale which will have no value. Mm -hmm. Instead, you take that money, put it in the share, mm -hmm. but you say, I'll lose money. Mm -hmm. But see, they put low price, you bought it, and the things are there in the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it's our choices. It's a matter of choice. You see? So, what choices are you making today will impact your life tomorrow? Mm -hmm. So, in this time we have always blaming other people blaming other people for the wrong choices we are making so we have to decide the choices we are making mm -hmm. when you wake up in the day you have to choose whether to be happy or to be sad because nobody can determine your happiness people can react to you say negative things to you but you have to choose if mm -hmm. I'm going to buy in into that thing or be happy. So when I wake up every day in, my, in the morning, I say I have a choice to make today. Mm -hmm. I either choose to be happy or to be sad. It doesn't matter what my wife say, what my son say, or what people say, I choose to be happy. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm only going by what you are saying, mm -hmm. you're going to control my life. <laughs> you're going to, you, if you are up, I'll be up. If you are down, I'm down. So you control me. So I choose my own way. Mm -hmm. So somebody can come here and speak to you and tell you every kind of thing. Okay, there is something in the brain that, if you know, Dr. Caroline Leaf wrote the book, mm -hmm. Shift Your Brain. She's a neuroscience and she said that your brain is made up of trees like proton. And every, as you come to this seminar, you're feeding your brain. Your brain begins to grow neurons, begin to grow proton. And your brain will never be the same again. And she said that in your brain, when you choose a right thought, 
your brain begins to grow like a blossom tree. That's why it's called the tree of life. Mm -hmm. It's in your brain. Now, if you feed that same brain with wrong information, it will destroy the cell. And that if you sin, sin destroys the cells in your brain. Mm -hmm. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. But if you feed it with the right kind of information, your life will totally change mm -hmm. for the positive, depending on what you are feeding your, your brain. Mm -hmm. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. So it's your choice. It's your choice to react what people say. You have a choice to say, I'm not going to buy in to that negative emotion. Mm. It's a choice. So life is all about choice. We take one slide, then we take a break. Now, I want to just conclude here before I, we come on this fifth slide. We need to understand that there are pathways to prosperity. Say with me, pathway. Uh, pathway. pathway. Mean that everybody that you see on this earth that is prosperous, they have used the same set of principles from the time immemorial to now. That means those principles, whether you are Hindu, Muslim, Christian, agnostic, atheist, it doesn't matter. If you apply those same principles, you will prosper. So prosperity is based on a set of principles that are not changeable and everybody can be prosperous if they find those principles and they engage in those principles mm -hmm. it's not the amount of money you have there are people who earn fifty thousand, but when you ask them that what do you have they'll tell you nothing but there are people who earn ten thousand, but they'll tell you how they manage that money so it's not the amount of money it's the principles that you are applying are you getting me? Amen. So these principles will work whether you are black or white, mm. whether you are Asian or no Asian. So you see the wealthy people today. Christians say, but these people don't believe in God. Mm. How come they are wealthy? As if, <laughs> you know what I'm you see, you see, It's not just say, I believe. It's the principle you apply. Is the what? Mm. Principles. So let me give the first principle. For us to be prosperous, we need to be financially literate. We need to be what? Financial literacy. Financial literacy is a must. You see, most people go to school, but they have never read a single book on finance. Just like any other subject, you cannot be a proficient in any subject if you have not learned it. You see? So financial literacy is knowledge about finance and wealth. You have to know. You must know, first of all, how to earn money. Secondly, how to manage money. Budgeting. How many of us have budget? Don't put your hand. Okay. But some people have no budget. And I can show you from 2005, my budget. I always buy ledger for the ministry and myself. Everything, everything. Some people, no budget. Can you imagine a government or a company without a budget? <laughs> they, they will go concourse. And any individual with them. So financial literacy is knowing about money. Number one, how to earn money. Number two, how to manage money. Number three, how to multiply money. Number four, and how to preserve money. You got to know how to earn, how to manage, how to multiply, and how to preserve the money. You have to have knowledge. You, know, you need to know when it comes to financial literacy, the difference between an asset and a liability. And get on acquiring assets. Are you getting me? Mm. An asset means anything that appreciates in value and brings money into your pocket. It's an asset. A liability is anything that depreciates in value and takes money from your pocket. 
So once you know what is an asset, keep acquiring assets. And everybody can to their level. Mm -hmm. Then you and I need to know the different types of income. Because somebody will say, she is not working, he is not working. Because we are not all working the same type of income. There is what is called earned income. These are people who go for salary mm -hmm. and they pay the highest amount of tax because they work on earned income. Mm -hmm. So when you are on earned income, before you get your money, the government has taken its own part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you say, ah, they told me I will end this. Look at what I get, tax. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's earned income. But you need to know again, there is also portfolio income, which is people who are like, Capital gain, real estate, they sell, and then they, they get some differences there. Then you need to know about passive income. This is what is called the one stream income, where it's called passive because you just put your money there, and your money keeps working for you. You don't have to do anything. For instance, you put your money in, in shares in the stock market, and you, are not, you travel now and go five years' time. You want to come? Your money has worked for you. So you are not working, but your money is working for you. So once you know the different types of income, your goal is to come out from the earned income and go to the business and go to the investment scale. Because once you see every one of us here, whether you are working for a company, you are in business for yourself. You are in business. Everyone is in business. Everyone here can create a product. Everyone can, can render a service. If somebody come here in this, in this uh, uh, community where we are, he say, I have a certain subject, pastor, I want to teach it. I want everybody to bring at least 200 krona. This subject will help them. I will galvanize people. All of us will come and will be willing to pay for that service to get that information. That is a business. And you start from that level. Because once you have people, you already have resource. Because all the money you get will come from your network. Your network, the, the number of people. So the money I get comes from my network. So when I meet somebody, I know this person has my money. <laughs> In a way. <laughs> so the thing is now is that I don't want to steal from them. I'm thinking, what value can I add to him? Mm -hmm. Let me give an example for, for brother, brother Alpha. I met him in the gym, and he was, he was just telling me about a book that he read about Awaiting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. He helped I have read this book, and uh, I, we started talking about gifters and non-gifters. He was like, he was supposed to go, but for that 10 minutes, he was like, man, you blow me away. Are you in this city? I said, yes, yeah, money. <laughs> <laughs> so what did I do? Started giving him value. Started putting value into him. He said, man, what? He came to me because when you, you need something, the teacher shows up. You see? So he started giving value. I started giving value, you know? Yesterday, I think two days ago, he called me. He said, Pastor, uh, my aunt tell you I just put something. I got a, something, and I just sent something for the ministry. Mm -hmm. But because I offer what? Value. If I didn't have no value, there's no way me and he would be crossing path. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because we used to go to the gym. There's no way. That's why work on your serve so that when you meet somebody the person you'll be able to offer the value that they'll always need you that's the highest thing you do you are not trying to take from them but don't ever meet somebody that they go they said wow this person meet them and offer them value and when they come to you don't look to money be willing to give them value. Once you offer value to people, even they go, they'll always come back because you offer them value all the time. That's life. Offering value. Don't say, what can I get? No, be willing to offer them value. Do it at your own best. Even if they don't give you, 
They will refer somebody. Something will come to you. You see? Value. Also, as I close, how do you increase in value? You see, sometimes they tell you that I, I, I look, used to look at it because I, I li listen to this financial. They will show me a painting. Mm. They say this painting costs one million, two million. Painting? <laughs> <laughs> painting. They say somebody bought you for 10 million. Mm. Painting. I said, yeah, I can draw now. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that you don't know the value these people give for it. And they said, a celebrity has a glove they sell it for 10 million <laughs> that is dead because you are i don't consider it to be valuable those people pay millions to have my emergency glove <laughs> because that's value so in your life now how do you increase your value number one is your competence are you competent in what you are doing in your workplace are you competent in what you are because if you are competent people will come to you mm. are you getting me mm. so you increase your value by being competent increasing demand working on yourself to put product you will never lose market number two character you can be competent but you lack character mm. character means that People cannot trust you. Character means they say, okay, this man has ability. He has competence. But man, if that man tell you, come at two, don't. That man he is not somebody who is reliable. But he has competence, but he lacks what? Character. Character. So he loses everything. So there is competence, there is character, and then there is capacity. The capacity, what are you able to bear and carry, your capacity. So in a year, you begin to ask yourself, what is my competence, what is my character, and what are, is my capacity? That's how you increase. So as we say, the first thing is financial knowledge. We need to be financially literate. So we're going to take a break. So we have been really blessed because everything that we do we are here to really inspire everyone that uh, all of us will have gifts and we are here to support each other you know we are here to support we are here to to to, to support each other so we ended on the session on financial knowledge please let's go to the scripture now in second chronicle chapter one verse seven please marius could you please read for us <coughs> second chronicle one uh read for us seven to ten in that night god appeared to solomon and said to him, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said to God, You have shown great and steadfast love to David my father, and have made me king in his place. O Lord God, let your word to David my father be now fulfilled. For you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Mm -hmm. Give me now wisdom and knowledge to go out and continue before these people. For who can govern this people of yours, which is so great? Please, uh, 11 and 12. God answered Solomon, Because this was in your heart, and you have not asked for possessions, wealth, honor, or the life of those who hate you and have not even asked for long life, but have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may govern my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. I will also give you riches, possessions, and honor, 
such that none of the kings had who were before you, and none after you shall have the like. Yeah, thank you. Now, you listen, Solomon is recorded to be the richest man in the world. Nobody has actually beaten the record of Solomon. Mm -hmm. Because at the time of Solomon, the Bible says there was gold and silver like dust. But if you look at it here, that Solomon asks only two things, knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge and wisdom. And these are the fundamentals we need to understand at this seminar. You need three things. In, for everything in your life to succeed, you need to have these three things. Let's take one scripture. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 24. And please read uh, 3. Proverbs chapter 24. Now bear in mind that Solomon asked for wisdom and knowledge. Proverbs chapter 24, please. 3 and 4. Yes. By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Thank you. These are the three things that you need when it comes to being successful in everything in your life. In every aspect, you need knowledge, you need understanding, and you need wisdom. Everything that you need. In a relationship, marriage does not succeed on love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me digress a bit because some people believe, oh, I love him. Oh, she loves me. Love fades away. After a while, <laughs> because what you love, you begin to see that on that first day, the time you met, I mean, you didn't want to depart from each other. You know, so we build our life on love, and love fades away. The three things to build life on, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Relationship which is not built on knowledge, understanding, and wisdom will collapse eventually. So, in wealth, I want to be specific, in wealth, we need knowledge. Knowledge means information. What you are getting now is what? Information. That's knowledge. Understanding simply means comprehension of that information you have received. Because not all of us will understand. Mm. We understand at different levels. Remember, the, the scripture talks of the parable of the sower. Mm. The sower went and sowed the word, isn't it? Yeah. Some fell on different kinds of soil. But the only soil that was productive was the one who heard it and understood mm. it and went and produced it. So it's your understanding that is the key. Yes. You see? Mm -hmm. Knowledge is information. So wealth is built on three premises. Once you have knowledge, you have understanding, then nobody can deceive you. Then the wisdom is the application of the knowledge you've already understood. Mm -hmm. So once you know about money, wealth, you are not perturbed, you are not moved by anything because you already understand it. Mm -hmm. You understand how it works. You understand how it's acquired. You understand how it's preserved. So it doesn't matter who is, who, what they can do. They cannot take it from you because you already understand it. You, and that's relationship. Everything is built on these three things. Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. If you build on these things, they will stand forever. <coughs> And that, that's why if you give your descendants, you give your children money without knowledge and inf knowledge and understanding, they'll waste it. Mm -hmm. And after a while, if it's million because they didn't understand and have knowledge, what happened? The money will go. But if you give them knowledge and understanding, it's more better than the wealth. Mm -hmm. So wealthy people don't actually give money, they teach. They give it with knowledge and understanding. So the little their children have, they can multiply because they have the knowledge, the understanding, and the wisdom. So that's the three components we are talking about. So understanding is very key. Understanding, when it comes to kingdom wealth, is to understand that God owns it all. 
Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Who owns it all? Wow. God. That's my concept. I believe the Lord, the earth is the Lord. I understand I am not the owner. I understand that what God gives me in this place, that's why I believe I can go anywhere, do anything. Because I just believe if it's my father's house, <laughs> I am working for you. Any place is open to me if I want it. That understanding that you are not the owner. Ownership is the curse of humanity today. Because when you see, even in our family today, we are, we are, we are disintegrating. It's when people begin to own mm. my car, my house, my bank account, my shoe, mm. my time. So when there is ownership, if intention is in the house, mm. you see people in the family ownership. Mm. You see, but once you understand that you don't own, but you just have access. You have what? Access. Access. When you need it, it is available, but you don't own it. Who owns it? God. God. So you are just a steward. Mm. So in the kingdom, understanding well is that I am a steward. Oh. A manager. That's right. So you are just managing. So when you receive your salary, you must understand that I am not the owner of this salary. Mm. I am managing. I am a manager. And if you are a good manager, what happens is that the owner will entrust you with more of your good management. Mm. But if you are a poor manager, what happens is that the owner will take away from you. Mm. So if you look at the people of the world today, you see that they are not going to church. They don't believe even in God. In fact, they curse God. <laughs> in fact, they don't even, But yet, they are controlled the world. How come God gives them the world? Because they are good managers. managers. But when you come to us in the church, Poor managers. Hallelujah. Miracle money just came from somewhere. <laughs> and what do you do? So you see the people of the world, they manage well. So because of their management, they get more. You see the country of Norway is rich because of good management. You see why most countries are poor is because of... But even though there are more Christians in those countries, <laughs> even though the people go to church, but if they are poor managers, so you see this country is very structured with good management, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine somebody going on the street and eating banana and throw the pill like that? <laughs> you will look like a madman, <laughs> isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so management, when you understand management that you are just a manager, you are not the owner, mm -hmm. you are just managing for God. And when you manage well, God will entrust you with more mm -hmm. because he's the owner mm -hmm. of everything. So let's look at one scripture. Go with me to Luke chapter 16, verse 11. Please, Marius. Luke chapter 16, verse 11. So money management is key. Say with me, money management money is money. the key. Yeah. yeah, to wealth in the kingdom. So from today... Start to track your money, how you are managing it from this seminar. Start to track it, who you are giving, what you are managing, and see three months from now what will happen to you. Mm. You see? Please read. If then you have, who have not been faithful in the unrighteous world, mm -hmm. who will entrust to you the true riches? Yes. So, so, so... Verse 10, please. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. So true. If you are faithful with the little, don't say, oh, it's just, I just have 5,000 a month. Mm. I just have 5,000 a month. It's not enough. Mm. It will never be enough because you are yeah. poor. Manager, but if you manage it well, next month will come with increase. Amen. But if you mismanage the five thousand, that's why you see even in ministry today, some ministries they had big members all did it, but today they will not exist. If you look into this ministry, and I will tell you with all integrity, in this ministry, I consider myself as a manager, and I know that since I'm managing. In spite of everything, he, the boss, will always provide for me. Amen. So, 
as a management principle, I know that the owner got 10%. That is non negotiable. The owner has what? 10%. He said, Give me 10% and use 19. So everything that comes into this ministry, whether COVID or no COVID time, 10% goes out. 10% has always been going out. And that principle has always worked. So 10% goes out because he's the owner and I'm just a servant and I'm renting. That's for the real estate that I'm staying with. If the earth is the Lord. So I give him 10%. And I know he is providing my need. So when I had a situation where I was down like 275,000 plus credit card and everything was on me. How am I going to do? Who am I going to call? I went to him. I said, this is the situation I have. I have this debt that are coming on me. He is faithful. And what happened? Within six months, even within six months, I was able to clear that debt for 300,000. I know it's real. And from that time, I've never gone to that situation again. And from that time, there's no way for me to come to that situation. I don't, I, I'm, to the glory of God, I'm not, I don't do ministry now that if people don't come out and give, I will not be able. If this ministry lasts for the next three years now, I'll be able to sustain myself without getting no corona from somebody. Good management. So wealth in the kingdom is not for you just to have a car, have a house, do this and brag on Facebook and Twitter, look this, do it. No, it is you managing well and use it for the purpose for which it was given. Are you getting me? So you ask, even when you lose, you don't cry and say, oh, I lose something. No, the manager knows. He knows. You don't cry when you lost. So you are not investing and say, I will lose. The manager knows. So but when you come to many of you today, you will see in most businesses in the world that have studied, study Big Gate, study Oprah Winnie, all of them give 10% of everything they own. You know them. They give out it. These are the people who have made money. And you know the principle. You know it's a principle, but you will not obey. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know this is not something you negotiate with. That 10% of everything you have goes to God. But yet, you will not obey. So it's a disobedience. Mm. And then you go to God and say, Lord, help me. He say, help me what? You have been robbing me. You have been stealing from me. And then you begin to cry, witchcraft demon, <laughs> ancestral spirit, <laughs> and bind all of them and lose them. God say, if you bind and lose, you are a robber. They are supposed to steal. <laughs> are you getting me? Yes. So, it's a principle. It's a principle. You see what Bigate is doing? Giving to Health Foundation. They know the principle works. Look at it. 10% of everything you own does not belong to you. If you are only taking in air, let's all of us now just breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, don't give out. Within a the time, they'll come, everybody's dead here. You see, your life is meant to give out at least 10% of everything you own, not to be consumed. You are to give. Life is in giving. Minimum 10% of everything does not belong to you. So it's understanding that you are not the owner, you are a steward, and you're supposed to honor the Lord. The word Lord means the owner, the master, with 10%. It's not that you're giving to the church. No, the church don't need that. You're giving to the owner. And I tell you, the moment you start to practice this principle, there will come a time where you will always be joyful in giving. And then you will start to give to causes that you don't know. I was ministering of recently, 
And uh, one lady, she's doing something in, in Uganda, and the Lord told me, give her 5,000. I just called her. Send her 5,000. Yeah, as I said, give me your account number for the work you are doing for the orphanage there. The Lord has said I should bless. Yeah, I wanted to go with long story. I said, no, it's the Lord. Don't, it's not for me. The Lord gives me. And if I tell you, giving is living. But when you are just a consumer and you spend, you see? So understanding that you are not the owner, you are just a manager. Number, we need to understand that the purpose for kingdom wealth, it's not for us. He says, but thou shalt remember the Lord your God, God for it is he who gives you what? The what? Power to, to get wealth that he may establish his covenant. God does not give you money. Tell your neighbor, God don't give you money. Give you money. Yeah. Some people are waiting for God to give. He said he shall give you power. The word power means ability. The word power means he gives you gifts. He gives you talent. He gives you this, and every one of us here, we got the talent to make us rich. Yeah. Everyone listening to me here, you are talented in something, you are gifted in something. I was uh, talking uh, last Sunday when we were in this, I was planning for the seminar, and we we're just discussing with Sister Sandra the kind of wisdom she gave. Wisdom she gave. And we we're talking with that, my wife. I said, Wow, look at the kind of wisdom. So we can even organize youth seminar where the youth can come and empower the youth. But where are they today? They are running around watching Facebook, doing all this kind of thing, not investing their energy and time for something that will produce. Mm -hmm. I say, look at the wealth of knowledge she has. All of you here, you have something. Some of you here, you are supposed to be uh, a YouTuber, bring content in your field. Because now the marketplace is not just the four walls. The internet is the marketplace. People are making, I was looking at a report on internet where a small guy there, they have one million followers. They are making six figures that you and I cannot make with their content. And you and I, we have content that we can put out there and make money when you are sleeping for eternity. They're just putting content on Facebook, on, on Twitter, and they're making six figures, I mean in dollars. And I listen to the content, I say, what is this? But they're making money. So now you don't need a shop with your YouTube, with your phone. You can put out content, start something, do, because God, your wealth is in your ability that God has given you. But if you don't utilize the ability, it is dormant. But the wealth is in you. Amen. So wealth does not come to you. It comes from you because you were born with wealth. Now you have to release it by serving, by giving that content. And it's not going to be easy. When you start doing it, people will come at you. Hey, look at that man. What do you want to try for do? Hey, what is he doing? If I have seven at that place, does he have money to pay? That have <laughs> what you want to show? <laughs> you see? So you got to be thick skin to what? Thick skin. Give it. Mm. Before you want to know, we'll be having seminar, this place will not be enough. Mm. Yes. I tell you, just put it out there. Do it for free. Serve the people. Mm. But don't hide it. Most of you, I tell you, you have gift. You are you are you are electronic, you are designers, mm. you are gifted, but you have just put yourself in this job. Yeah, I must get job. Oh. If they don't give me job, God say, open your eyes, you have more gift than the job. Mm. He, hey God, they must give me that job in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> God said, look within yourself, you are already in job. Mm. There's something you can do that's more than that place. Mm. But you've been trained. To look for a job. You see? Mm. Some of you here can sing. Some of you here can cook. All those I give. Some of you here can run. Some of you can, here can say, Pastor, I'm a physical trainer. Can you come? I'll be training you for at least one week to make you muscle. I'll give you some money. <laughs> you see? Mm. Yes. Just do something. Train. Do something. Mm. 
Start from somewhere. Put it out. Because now you don't need shock. So when you understand that, you will not limit yourself. So the wealth is meant for the kingdom. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. It's meant for, and the kingdom is not just the church. The kingdom is what? Helping the poor, mm -hmm. helping the widows, helping the orphan, mm -hmm. making a, an impact. See, if we go now to people and tell them, God is the Lord, he owns everything, and God is good, and the people are poor, and we cannot give them food. They say, carry this thing go. In fact, I don't want to get nothing. I'm hungry. But the moment we give them some food, some bread, then we can tell them God now, isn't it? Now, we are not only giving them knowledge, but we're giving them something. They'll be able. You see, so the purpose of the gospel is not just spiritual, but it's practical. Helping the widows, helping the orphan. You are the one. See, the rich don't care about the poor. They know that the poor will always be poor. They don't care to give them knowledge. They don't care. But you care. So that's the purpose for wealth. To distribute. Let's go to one scripture. The purpose for wealth is to distribute. To share. Go with me. First Timothy chapter 6. Please, Marius. Verse 17. Are you getting something? Mm -hmm. Yes. So once you know the purpose, it's not for self-indulgence. Now, yes, that scripture will explain everything before we move to the next slide. First, six, six, yeah. Seven, yeah. Mm -hmm. As for the rich. Okay, start from verse 16. Who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. Mm -hmm. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Yes. As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. Yes. So, he said, charge them who are rich, not to be haughty, but to trust in the living God. Charge the worries. Don't be talking of God. you. I'm he's talking to you. <laughs> it's me charging you. All of you are rich. <laughs> if you look at the world standard, you are among the richest in the world, isn't it? Yes. You have a cell phone. Do you know that the COVID virus has brought how many level of poverty now people cannot even have one meal a day? Isn't it? Mm -hmm. They cannot even have one meal. Some of you here, you don't know how rich you are. But you still want more? Clothes, shoe, but you are rich. Mm -hmm. If you have 1,000 krona, you are among the richest. So when they are talking of charge them who are rich, don't be talking of, okay, they are talking to me again, not me. No, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> because you are among the richest in the world. Especially you live in this country. You don't need, in this country, they make sure that you not have housing problems. At least the government mm -hmm. provides for accommodation, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. The government makes sure that you have at least some food to yes. eat. They make sure that at least you have warm. What else you need again? So you are above the poverty line. I know <laughs> some organizations are talking of poverty. No, I say when they talk of poverty, don't be talking of poverty. <laughs> because yeah, you don't need food. The government provides. So when they are talking of the rich, you are among them. Mm -hmm. It's not that we are greedy. Then we look at other people, look at what they have, we want more. Mm -hmm. But we are rich. So in the kingdom, it is all about contentment. Mm -hmm. Is what? He says, we brought nothing in this world and nothing we will take out. If we have clothes and food, let us be content. For godliness and contentment is great wealth. Is what? It's not the desire to have more and more and more and more. You will never be satisfied. As the richest of the rich, they always want more. But in the kingdom, if you get if you are working and you earn, be content. Mm. Be? Content. Content. Yeah, that means don't compete with the next person. Oh, you just bought a house. Ah. And then you are struggling to buy one. 
Mm. And then you enter in the house, you cannot sleep again. You are working three jobs just to pay mortgage. It becomes a task because you want people to come. Look at my room. Look at this one. How many people are sleeping there? No, nobody here in this room. And it's there unused, unutilized. It's just lying dormant and you keep the house there. It's not necessary. In the kingdom, you use everything that you have. You utilize it. You maximize it. So it's contentment. Be content. Are you getting me? Amen. Yes. If you are working on food, be content. It's not working on food. Be content. But when you have a greed, that's why Jesus says, beware of covetousness. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of things. That's why you see us people are entering into society because they want to make it at all costs to imitate their friends. Churches even. No, be content. That's the wealth in the kingdom is contentment. Yeah. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, be content. So we look at it that financial understanding is stewardship. And I've given that scripture that stewardship is utilizing and managing all resources God provide for the glory of God and for the betterment of his creation. The essential, the central essential biblical view, stewardship is managing everything God brings in a believer's life in the manner that honors God. Are you getting me? Managing to the everything, managing well. So be a good manager. Then it talks again, biblical stewardship is it means being a caretaker of God's kingdom. As Peter said, 1 Peter chapter 4, 10 to 11. As each one receives a gift, deploy it in serving one another as good manager of the grace God has. So my gift is to speak, is to teach. So what did I do? I have to refine my gift and serve my people. You see? Most, some of you here, you are good teachers and you have content, and we need that content. Are you getting me? It's to teach, it's to bring it out as a good manager. So it's all about stewardship. You remember, if you go to heaven and God says, Oh, look at all the gifts I gave you, and you never use it at all, you know, that will be a waste of, of energy. God said, I gave you wisdom, I gave you knowledge, I gave you gift. But then, you never used it. And why don't we use it? Fear. So, let's just go now. The first thing we need to know, I said, is financial knowledge. The second is understanding. The third is wisdom. Say with me, wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom it goes with planning. Wisdom goes with planning. Say with me, planning. planning. Planning means we need to... I have here... Planning... It, it deals with us knowing the stages of life. I, we need to know the stages of life. Say with me, the stages of life. Stages of life. Because life is in stages. Uh, I miss one of the things. Life is in stages. Which means, when we talk about the stages of life, we'll just end there. When we talk about the stages of life, life is in four seasons. Wisdom is understanding the seasons of your life. Not all of us are in the same season. So we cannot do things the same way. There is what is called the morning season of your life. Morning is 0 to 30 years old. There is what is called the afternoon season of your life. Afternoon is from 31 to 60. There is what is called the evening of your life from 60 to 90 and the the, the, the night season of your life. So every one of us is in a season. And when you manage your morning season well, you will be able to enjoy your afternoon season. When you manage your afternoon season well, you will be able to enjoy your evening season. Your morning season from 0 to 30 is the time that you begin to learn. It's your learning age. It's your what? Learning means you need to understand how life works. You need to learn. You see? You need to learn, have a relationship with God, 
in, the, in that age, you need to find your purpose. In that age is when you begin to talk of marriage. Who am I going to marry so that I will spend the rest of the seasons in my life with joy? So you know your purpose. You're planning your, your life. You're going to school. You are planning so that when you are 30, you're getting married. And then your children, you see, when you are married. So from that Zero to thirty is not a time to be running around and say, "I want to enjoy life." Oh, I'm going to nightclub. Oh, I'm going here. Oh, you are wasting time in your morning season. You see, so from zero to thirty, you have a relationship with God. You have a sense of purpose. Not going to a prophet when you are thirty-one, thirty-four, and be telling the prophet, "What has God called me to do?" So at that age, you are looking, I know my purpose, I know you know your vision, and then you are looking for the wife who will come and be a helpmate to help you build your life. So, so from 31 now is what is called your earning age. Say with me, earning. Mm-hmm. Earning, it means you are earning from the knowledge you have acquired and learned something. You have a skill, you have a purpose. Now you have a partner who is helping you and you are building something for your family. Yeah. Are you getting me? Mm-hmm. Yes. So at this age, you are earning from the knowledge you have acquired. You are earning. Yeah. Then you go to the next phase, which is the turning stage of your life. That stage is from 60. You are supposed to impact their children and your descendants to impart them with knowledge. But if a man has wasted the, big, the morning hour of his life, no knowledge, no skill, no information, and you say, I want to get married, you are carrying fire. <laughs> because that person will burn you. You see? Then why are you leading me? You say, I don't know. Where are you going? I don't know. So, when I came to this country by 29, I started finding out what is my purpose. Why am I here? What am I doing? Is this the meaning of life? I've been watching my friend. I started to turn. What is my vision? What is my purpose? I started discovering myself. I started breaking away from my friends. By the age of 30, I knew exactly this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be teaching. I'm going to be a leader. I wrote it in 2005 in this country, and my friends, they laugh at me. I said, one day I'll be teaching. I didn't know, but I dedicated myself to study and break away from my friend. So before I met my wife, I told her, this is what I've signed that I'm going to do with my life. This is my commitment to my creator, to my God, which I'm going to do. Mm. That was it. So he said to it. So when it came a time where tension, he said, Are you not going to look for a job or find? I said, I told you, woman. <laughs> 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 From the beginning you came, I told you. <laughs> this is what I'm dedicating my life to other you. It was not easy. The car looking for a job. Oh, that is, I said, I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> I said, tension every day. I'm there studying. I'm there reading. As I told you from the beginning, you enter the covenant. You sign in. <laughs> you either in or go out. This is what I am. I said, I dedicate my life to this thing. Are you getting me? Yes. But the result is there. And I know it's true. Mm-hmm. The result is there. It came with that. I mean, we had financial problems during those times. That every month end to God, we are hey, money now. Let me read. Hey, are you not looking for that? I'm not looking. He's my calling. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to the law and report. You know? But things change. Now she, I can say, okay, take this. Go and do your thing. You want to buy this? Take this money. If you do that to him, I will not be happy. <laughs> you see? 
I know it's the truth. Mm -hmm. This is practical. Everybody can do it. If you dedicate five years of your life to your calling, mm -hmm. dedicate it to your calling before people will call on you. Mm -hmm. Dedicate it. Distract yourself from anybody who is not going nowhere, who cannot assist you. Cut away from them their phone contact and say, these five years I'm going to invest in myself. You, I have a story of a man, I will tell you next time. You will grow in your environment. People will invite you. They will come for you. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. Because you will be so much. They must, you must break out. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. So that age is when you are focusing to turn to impact. So when you come to your impact, and sometimes you will even know too much that you'll be impacting your generation before your age. And they say, this man is, is wiser than he is. Yeah. Meanwhile, there are people 60. You ask them, they say, me, I don't know. You teach me. Yeah. Then you have some parents now, because they never do, did anything in their morning age and the afternoon, their children have become a burden to them. So their children are carrying load mm -hmm. to sustain their father and mother, that the father and mother was the one to direct them. So your father and mother cannot even direct you, teach you anything now. So they are now telling you, you now give me. And you are saying, why? I'm already starting my own family. I have load. Then I carry you again. And that's one of the cause of poverty in Africa. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. So we have to break that. So understanding the seasons of your life. That means you need to plan. Failing to plan is planning to fail. You need to have a plan. Mm. And when it comes to plan, there are three steps to planning. Number one, in financial planning, assess your, first, your current financial situation. Assess it. Where are you now? Not all of us are in the same level financially, isn't it? Mm. And not all of us are in the same stage, isn't it? Mm. All of us are different at levels, isn't it? But now assess your financial situation. Where am I now currently in this seminar? Because two months from now, we're going to have another seminar. I'm going to give you more information. Where am I now financially? That means you must have a statement of account. A statement of account means you must know what is your income and your expenditure. Do, are you in debt or out of debt? Are you, what is your current financial situation? If you are married, is something to sit down with your spouse. And I tell you, if you do this, God will supernaturally shock you. I know what I'm saying. He will supernaturally shock you if you put things in order. Because God does not just help a person. He's a God of order. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. So you sit down and look at it. What is my financial statement? That means what is your net worth? Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to look at it. That means what are you worth now financially if you take all your assets from your liabilities? It doesn't matter. God will bless you. Mm. I tell you. So you sit down and sometimes even in, in my brain tension, you might call a neutral person, but you must deal with it. Mm. Because I tell you, finance is one of the great cause of divorce, even among Christians. It's going to be, an, so you sit down and say, what is our current financial situation? Don't worry about it. God will bless you. But keep keeping God first in, in your finances. And say, okay, this is our current financial situation. We have a network of this, of that, of that. Once you have come to that fa current financial situation, the next thing to, to do is to determine your financial destination. Mm -hmm. Because every flight has a beginning, and an end. Mm -hmm. If I say I want to go to Dubai, I, I go to an airline company now. I want to fly to Dubai. They will ask me from where? Mm -hmm. I cannot say Dubai. I say, where are you calling? Mm -hmm. Is it from Oslo? Is it from Trondheim or Bergen? So I must know where I am to where I want to go. go. So you, you know where you are and you ask yourself in five years' time, mm -hmm. in ten years' time, what do I, I see? Do you want to be debt free? You'll be shocked by the supernatural hand of God how things will come to you mm -hmm. if you have a plan. So you look at your life now and say, in five years' time, 
What do I need to become to reach my financial destination, to be financially free? You see, all of us, we don't have the fa same financial destination. My own, I can tell you personally, is just to be free. I just want freedom. That's all. I don't, my own, I, I don't want to wake up in the morning and say, whoa, did he, I want to be in a position where if my son say, Papa, can you help me? I can help. My family, I can help. Even if I'm living like this, I just want to be free because me, personally, I don't like stress. Mm -hmm. Stress takes me off. Mm -hmm. So I want to be secure in a point where I'll be able to meet the necessary things that I have to do and that keeps me to do my purpose. Mm -hmm. Some people, their own is to have a car, a house, and things, which is good. That's their own. But my own, I want to be free. Mm -hmm. I just want to be secure. I just want to do what I want to do that nobody tell me can you come up for your that night they get you for that you know I, I don't want that so you need to know what is your current situation are you getting me mm -hmm. and what is your what destination mm -hmm. five years from now you ask yourself where are we going to be financially mm -hmm. you sit with your spouse you look at them and say five years from now You'll be shocked with miracle happening when you have things in place. I tell you, you'll be shocked. The supernatural on this earth, when you put God first and you do this thing, you will see maybe within three years you'll be shocked that you are free. You'll be shocked because you put things in order. So you determine. Now, the third thing is you choose your vehicle. Now, we don't have much time. I'm not going to do Choosing your vehicle, for just like a vehicle that they say, if somebody wants to go now to Oslo, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There are means, mode of transportation. Mm -hmm. Somebody take the plane. Somebody take a car. Somebody take the train. Somebody take the bicycle. Who will get there first? The flight. The flight. Mm -hmm. Is it because that person is more spiritual? Mm -hmm. Is it because he pray more hard? Mm -hmm. Is it because he fast? Is why? The mode of transportation, isn't it? Mm. If you are taking bicycle, can you ride from here to Oslo? Yes, yes it's possible, but you will die. <laughs> <laughs> you, you will get there, but the state, you get it. You know, you see the people with backpack, with their luggage, yes, they, they travel. So it's to determine now your vehicle. Vehicle is what we call it just like in the world of the physical, also in the financial. You have financial vehicle that you can take. Number one, financial vehicle I, I like is the stock market. Bond. Bond is secure. You share. You invest in the share. Another thing is you can start a business. And every one year, and I'm going to show you, you are in business. You can start a business. You can offer service, you can offer a product. You can start a business. The third thing is real estate. You can do real estate, you know, at your own level. You see? So these are mode. So we Christians sometimes, they only teach us giving, but they don't teach us the vehicles of wealth creation. Isn't it? Yes, so that we, you get to that point. So planning is very important if you and I wants to get into the wealthy place. Let me just give this one slide before we close. Now, in your planning, there's what is called in the financial world the 3070 rule. Say with me 3070. 30, the 3070 rule of wealth creation is this principle that every one of us need to practice. Number one. Learn to live below your means. Learn to live. Yeah, some people live above their means. That's why they get into debt. <laughs> they want to buy a car which they don't have the money. They want to buy shoe. Can you imagine some people borrow for shoes? <laughs> some people borrow for clothes. Can you imagine they borrow? Some people go to shop. And they take a nice dress that they want, especially like you, the boy is coming like that. They go and dance and they say, I didn't like this dress, take it back. <laughs> Sometimes they smell perfume and cigarette in it. 
So live below your means. Living below your means means you must live on 30, 70 rule. Living below your means means that you live on 70% of your income. You need to regulate that depending on your financial situation. So live on 70% of your income. Number three. 30% of your income must be able to exit from you, 30% at least. Mm. You divide it in such a way that, number four, 10% of your income is your tithe, is your honor to God, at least 10% tithe. Mm. Just tithe, 10% at least. 10%, the other 10% is what is used as con capital, active capital, where... You can be a person who is in business. Let's say you want to organize a seminar or you want to write a book or you want to do something and you are saving that 10% for that business venture. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's say you, you are planning to start something in, let's say, three months' time and then you are keeping the 10%. So when that time comes, mm -hmm. you are not dipping into your saving. You already have saved the money for the business. So you take it there and do it. Mm. And every money that comes from what you did, you put it back into that business. That's what is called active capital. So you are working on it now, on that 10% on your business. You don't save and then you say, I want to start a podcast and you go and take for yourself in again. <laughs> no. So you save at least 10%, which is your business capital mm. that you're going to use for your business. Are you getting me? Mm. Then the next 10% is what I call passive capital. This is the money you can put now in the stock market and it's working for you. Mm. So if you do this, you live on the 70. If your lifestyle cannot manage 70, you are living above your means. Which means you need to cut down on certain ex mm. unnecessary expenditure. Mm. Some, people, some of us, we have two mobile phones. For what? What business are you in? <laughs> <laughs> some people they carry mobile phone like this man call here, this man call here. If people are calling you, you are not serious. <laughs> every minute they are calling you, every minute, and you are not selling nothing, <laughs> and you are not servicing nothing. Who is calling you? So, as you begin to grow, wealthy people they begin to cut on their friendship. Are you getting me? They start to have very few friends as they climb up. Because mm -hmm. you look at Jesus 3, 12, 70. Mm -hmm. You start to cut on the unnecessary people that drain you, mm -hmm. everything. You look at people that they can invest in you. Mm -hmm. Your time is invested. Are you getting me? Yeah. So that's how you do it. So the 10% is what you now invest in the stock. Mm -hmm. Or you put it in the bond market. And that money begins to work for you. Which is called passive uh, asset, passive capital. You don't have to do nothing. Mm. You know? So then, the last thing is being content. As you are growing, things are moving. Mm. Gradually, you are growing. Are you getting me? Mm. Growing at your own pace. At your own pace. So that's it. Let's conclude now. The last thing is financial discipline. Like we talk of discipline. This is the most important step for financial freedom. Lots of people have financial education knowledge and they have acquired financial stewardship understanding, but they lack the financial discipline to execute their financial intelligence. So this is when the boys are separated from the men because you can know everything, but if you don't do it, it doesn't matter. What's the use of coming, learning, and you don't do? You see? What I'm telling you is what I'm doing. And I, I can show you my record of doing it. Some people, like some of you, when they come to me and ask questions, I don't only teach them, I show them that this is what I'm doing. See, this is what I'm doing. A good teacher is one who does it, not teaching. Are you getting me? So, you can get the knowledge, you can get the plan, but if you don't execute it, it makes no sense. Mm. That's why it's the wisdom is the application. Mm. You see? Mm. It's the application. And I tell you, all of us, we can change. Mm. You can change. 
So you can be able to leave a legacy for your children. You see, some of us, there's nothing we can depend on our parents to live for us. In fact, they are only relying on us. You see? Yeah. So, that discipline. Some people have started, but they lack the discipline to persist till they arrive at their desired destination. You see? Therefore, you live prepared. So, you start something, but again, you stop it. When you know it's a principle. Principle work, whether you like it or not. So when you start it, you continue. You continue. Because you know it's a principle. It's a fixed law. It must happen. It will happen. You are not dealing on whether a probability it is fixed. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. Yes. It must happen. So you keep on the persistence. The persistent. The persistent. The persistent. So... I think with these few points, I've not been able to confuse you, <laughs> but I've been able to like uh, inspire you because next time when we come, I'll, I'm going to teach about the doorway to prosperity, which is what is called investment mentality. There is some mentality we have to develop, you know. So, and and this this. Uh, this this course is not just me. I want to us to coordinate with people here who can have a session, who can have a time. We are here to inspire. We are here to help each other. Just that I am privileged to be in this position to inspire people. Maybe Maros have something next time to present 30 minutes. Maybe Pastor Chica, maybe Sister Sandra, Sister. Julieta, we do it like that and we inspire each other. Because the church, when we come, we too spiritual, but we need to be practical. Mm. You get to me? Mm. We need to be practical. practical. And the funniest thing is that once you are doing something like this, you, you develop. Mm. You develop because a time is going to come, you want to speak with people. Mm. You know? So we have to start somewhere and start to do it. We have to start somewhere. So I encourage you, whatever is your passion, whatever is your desire, don't let it die. Because the fact that you have that desire is a proof that you can do it. Don't let it die. Just continue it. Just do it. Just do it. So we plan that uh, next time we're going to have another seminar um, on the uh, Saturday, the 11th of December, and we're going to look into that. So, so I hope that uh, you all have been blessed with this presentation. Amen. Amen.